The following video is a unit overview of the Transaction Processing Systems option topic in the Information Processes and Technology Stage 6 syllabus. Now, when looking at this unit, we need to understand basically what a transaction processing system is, and we're going to categorize this into its main headings based on the syllabus. So, firstly, we have the characteristics of a transaction processing system. These include what is a transaction, components of transaction processing systems, batch processing, real-time processing, data validation, and the history of transaction processing systems. Now, the components of a transaction processing system are pretty much the same components of any information system, but we need to know how they specifically relate to transaction processing systems. So this is the areas of purpose, data and information, information technology, the information processes, and participants. Next, we have storage and retrieval, which is a main information process of transaction processing systems and a focus within this unit. With storage and retrieval, we need to understand storage of digital data in databases, the retrieval of stored data, the store of paper-based records, which may be used when the transaction uh, processing system is not available, data backup and recovery, updating in batch systems, and updating in online real-time systems. For data backup and recovery, we need to look at a variety of different methods that are available for achieving this. So the grandfather, father, son method of updating and backing up data, um, both frequently and then full backups periodically. Off-site storage and secure on-site storage for keeping our backed up data safe. Full and partial backups, so full backups when we back up everything and partial backups such as differential backups and incremental backups which are periodic and only backup data that has not been backed up in a full backup. Recovery testing, ensuring that data when recovered is all there and basically working and not corrupted. Suitable media for backing up, so our magnetic tape as well as magnetic disk in our external hard disk drives as well optical disk for smaller backups. Specialized backup software, so such as Time Machine, which is used on Macintosh computers, and Windows Backup and Restore, which is used on Windows-based machines. Transaction logs, used for uh, keeping a record of when a system is backed up through a transaction, and these can also be used when conducting a rollback, basically when we need to undo data when a system has been uh, had data entered incorrectly. Documenting procedures, so documenting basically when backups are done or when a restore was done and recording this so that we have basically a history of when these things occurred and if there has been an issue or anything we can trace that history back. And then mirroring, when we are writing data to multiple hard drives, so not necessarily backing it up, we're actually writing it simultaneously to multiple hard drives and then as you can see down at the bottom again, roll back once again, which is used in conjunction with our transaction logs. In updating batch um, systems, we need to know the historical uh, significance of the batch systems. Okay, and really how it's been one of the first information systems in effect, okay, and really led to a lot of other things coming from it. We need to know the limitations of these batch systems, okay, the technology required to do um, updating in batch systems, what are the steps and what are suitable applications for doing so. Updating in real time basically is more faster updating because it's obviously happening in real time as mentioned. So we need to know the relevance of that, what technology is required, both hardware and software, steps involved once again and suitable applications once again. The next focus area is then types of transaction processing systems. So we look at web-based and non-web-based systems and basically the definition between those two is one uses the internet whereas the other is more using your own private network. Online real-time processing, okay, which means basically we are on a network and things are being updated on the network, so from multiple nodes, all accessing a database. Uh, batch processing, where we let data accumulate, basically, and then at a set period, we update and process all those transactions, okay, all at once, usually through an automated process. We also need to acknowledge that some systems may appear real-time, but in fact they are an actual batch process, okay, so they're actually um, building up the data, okay, and although the user sees it as real-time, it doesn't get processed till a later date, okay, and an example of this is credit card transactions. 
The next area we'll look at then is the actual other information processes. Okay, and we look at a few other information processes here in both analyzing and collecting. Now, in analyzing, we look at other systems that can aid in transaction processing systems. And these systems, some of them are other option topics in this course. So decision support systems, and they aid in the decision making process in what we can do, okay, in moving forward. Management information systems, which help us, um, you know, organize our data and also give us feedback based on the data. Data warehousing systems for storing old databases, our archived databases, and these are then used for data mining in which we look for trends in the data, it, once again, for future planning and how we can create more profits or more opportunities, as well as enterprise systems for managing our larger businesses. For collecting, the information process of collecting, okay, we look at hardware, okay, and hardware includes ATM machines, includes barcode readers, and um, includes RFID, okay, for tracking actual uh, products. We need to know how web-based forms as well as database forms can be used to collect data and how we need to present our screen design so they can do this effectively. You pretty much fill in web-based forms all the time when you sign up to a website or if you are purchasing something online, whenever you're filling in text boxes, you are using web-based forms. So we need to acknowledge the design principles that make them easy to use and user-friendly and basically make it that the user is a participant in collecting the data. The final area we look at are the issues related to transaction processing systems. And obviously it's broken into two areas. So we have the specific um, trends, okay, in transaction process systems. And you might see these trends as familiar with the unit of information systems and databases in that we need to understand what data warehousing and data mining is. And as mentioned, the warehousing is the storing of archived data. And then the mining is going through that data and looking for trends and patterns that are useful in our future planning. And then we also look at OLAP and OLTP tools. OLAP, Online Analytical Processing, is a data mining tool and it's used for looking at the archive databases in finding the trends. But OLTP is basically used on live databases, actual analysis of data that is in effect, a database that is constantly and still getting updated. And then finally, we'll look at the issues related to transaction processing systems. So in that, we have the changing nature of work. The fact that a lot of the stuff in transaction processing systems is becoming automated in both batch and real time. In batch, basically, we are calculating and processing all these transactions at once, and it's all done by a machine, thousands of transactions, okay? And in the past, this might have been done by peop uh, people. The other side, in real time, okay, we now have self-checkout terminals, okay, point of sales terminals that customers can use themselves and become the participant in entering the data. So this is getting rid of a lot of entry level jobs that a lot of teenagers, people like you out there, get as your first job. Okay, so instead customers are just doing themselves instead of a person being behind the counter and scanning it for them. We also look at alternative procedures. What happens if the transaction processing system is not available? What can we refer to? Is there a backup system available? Okay, is there one that can work just locally within the workplace while the system is down or the network is down? If there is full no access to the transaction processing system, is there a paper-based method set up where we get down all the product IDs of things being purchased and then enter them into the system when it's back online? Bias in data collection refers to basically when we actually do and look at our data and what we're retrieving from our transaction processing system, okay, is there any skewing of results? Are we making it look like we made a better profit than we actually did? Are we ignoring some data over other data to make ourselves look good or to suit a particular purpose, but we're not reflecting the actual data that we actually have, okay? The importance of data in all three areas of data security, data integrity, and data quality. So data security, is our data safe? How do we keep it safe? So do we back it up regularly? Is there actually virus protection on our system stopping it from getting corrupted? For the actual participants, are there login procedures in they have usernames and passwords to control who can access the data? Okay, do we have a firewall on our network to uh, prevent hackers from getting into our network? Is there encryption? such as for online um, e-commerce, when we're buying things online or doing online backing, encryption is used to scramble data. So if that's intercepted, people aren't finding out our private details. Data integrity relates to the fact that the data stored in our databases 
is it basically correct? How do we keep it correct? Is it valid? Is it up to date? So do we have the actual up to date proper data in our databases? Okay, and so we may use validation tools. We may need to regularly review the data in our database and possibly collect information from our customers, ensure that data is up to date and correct. And then the final area is the quality of data. When I read the data on screen, does it make sense? Is it actual information? Is it useful to me as a user of this system? Then the final area we'll look at in issues related to TPSs is control. Who controls the data? The system controls a lot of the processing in batch processing, okay, but someone administers the system. So who has access to it? What can they do? And once again, also it relates to security as well with who can access the data. So I hope this video has given you a good introduction into transaction processing systems and what you'll be looking at in this unit. Essentially that a transaction processing system, okay, processes multiple transactions, so the exchange of data, and is used a lot in conjunction with financial services through the internet. So we do need to make sure that we are backing up our data, data is valid, and we understand the processes that are involved here. So I hope this gives you a good introduction to this unit.